Okay, I just picked up my uh, trailer kit from Northern Tool. This is a 4 by 8 foot kit. Comes in three boxes and we're going to start unpacking it. And we'll just inspect the parts as we go along. As you can tell, I, uh, I like to rip things open. Pretty heavy cardboard on there. And, uh, but I don't plan on saving any of it, so we'll just rip it apart a lot quicker that way. A little cumbersome, I probably should have taken out of the uh, CRV. But there's the tires. Just checking to see, make sure they're the right size and that they got air in them. These are rated for 55 miles on the highway. Okay, we're going to, here's I found the instruction book finally. Now I can uh, take a look at it and see how to put this thing together. I'm still going to inspect part. These are the springs that are in there. They look good. And I think we take out, uh, there's a bag of hardware or two in there that we're going to take out. And uh, this might be the, uh, that looks like the wheels for when you tilt it up. And anyhow, these are the fenders. We're going to start packing this back in the CRV for right now. And I think I'm taking a break here for the day, but we'll be right on back. So we're going to uh, pack it all up for the night. And uh, the clip just keeps right on rolling here, and we'll, we'll continue doing the inspection of the parts. So anyhow, here's the next morning. And uh, we're going to start looking at all the frame members now to see how those things are going. Okay, it's the next morning now. We're going to start inspecting the side members and the frame members. I read the book last night, so I had a pretty good idea how this is going together. But I always like to inspect everything, make sure it's going. You can see these boxes are pretty heavy, so I tell you, it's a little chore to do all this stuff. Anyhow, I just wanted to make sure that I understood where each side piece and, and cross member went. And I'm just looking to see there's no uh, broken parts or bent parts or holes that are gouged or whatever. It all looks pretty good. Kind of boring to do it, but it's a lot better to do it before you start putting the whole thing together and having to wind up taking it apart, which I'm going to have to do a little further down. You'll see further on in the clip. But that wasn't my fault. So anyhow, this is what we're looking at. I'm going to continue looking at these things for a while. And everything looks good so far. And take a look at uh, another piece here. The holes are quite similar, and the only big thing is you have to make sure is that uh, what side is up. There is one little bit of difference I saw in just one of the pieces, but okay, we're done all inspecting all of that, and uh, yeah, we're going to try to figure out which is which. So here we're getting ready to put them down on the... Uh, I'm going to lay them out on some cardboard in the garage. And uh, I got the book with me just to make sure. Because it can be a little confusing. So I like to lay it out and then I can... I can actually get a picture in my mind and verify with the book. that I got the parts right side up and in the right place. Oh, 
Everybody says it's out of quotes. Look, right, Rudy? Rudy, come on, get that camera over here. <laughs> That's my granddaughter's puppy. That's my granddaughter in the background talking. And my daughters are also. Okay, this is uh, what I got left to do. I did the back part of it. It's all done. And those pieces laying in the middle are what's got over the front. Against the back wall are the springs and uh, some other brackets. And uh, the final parts that I got to do. And uh, so it's... I think this is where I'm taking a break for the day and then we'll get back on it first thing tomorrow morning. This is... Uh, this is when they have the front and the back assembled and they're connected with the hinges. And this is how the thing will tilt uh, when you get it all put together. You can notice I also put the front tow bar and that stuff on there. Just a lot of very simple to do. book is very, very easy to follow. And uh, But I do have to tilt or turn this over on the back side now for a few other things we got to do. You can see I've got the uh, the brackets in for the for the rail post also on there. Just want to make sure that it all looks together. This thing is all loose right now. What I'm putting on there right now is going to be the spring brackets and the, the tilt brackets. But I like to lay it all out like I did before. Make sure I got the right ones in the right spot. And. Uh, it works out pretty good. These are this the other spring bracket I'm putting on there right now. And as we go along, I'll get the wheel over the, the these are the wheel brackets for when you use it if you tilt it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna tilt it for the winter or not. That's uh, I I do have a place I can store this, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it or not. But it is a option if you want to do it on this one. Okay, you notice now, I instead of bending over, I got this thing set up on, a, on some blocks and some pails there. It's a lot easier to do. And now we're going to put that uh, first spring bracket on. And it's a little tricky to hold it and get the bolts all put together. Uh, but getting it off the floor is an awful lot, uh, a lot easier to do. And you can see that sometimes... Uh, I missed the hole with the, with the bolt and down it comes. But those things happen. All of these bolts are you put in there, they all have uh, lock nuts on them. So you don't need lock washers. They are a little hard to tighten. There, there's a lot of, lot of bolts to put in there. So you better be ready to uh, crank a lot of bolts. And, but it's a pretty sturdy trailer when you get it all done. So we'll do this on this side, and then we got one for the other side yet. Matter of fact, I don't know if we got that one. We'll we do it on both sides along with the uh, along with the wheel brackets. Just gotta take your time. At this point, you still don't have, I still don't have all the bolts holding the frame solid together. You want to make sure you got all put together before you square it up and, and get it all bolt. I like to use, uh, I like to use a vice grip uh, for some of these. So you can just put the vice grip on the nut. And you take the right to wrench on the bolt head and you can just tighten it up. It's a lot easier than trying to hang on to a wrench. And I do that quite a bit. I just just easier to do, that's all. There's not a whole lot of alignment on these here. Okay, there you can see I got the, I've got the spring bracket I put on there. And uh, I'm just going to tighten up one more nut on here. And 
If you got a vice wrench, they work pretty good for securing these lock, the lock nuts that go on there. That way you don't have to try to reach underneath and hold on to it. You can just, like the crez or the uh, vice grip just holds it right in place, so you don't have to move it too much. Well, this one did slip out, it looks like, but it's still the best way of doing it. I found out, anyhow. And there you go, you tighten them up. There's no torque requirements and all. The only torque requirements you got is on, is, uh, on the wheels. Okay, so there's the wheel brackets that's in place. Now, I didn't install the wheels on. I didn't want them rattling around. They're kind of loose. But here the the uh, putting the fenders on. Pretty simple. Just a couple bolts to put them on. Sometimes it's a little awkward, but you can just go ahead and get her all done. It was an awful cold spring up here, and I'm doing this in uh, in the mid to end of March. And I tell you what, some of the days was pretty cold. I thought I could do this whole project in a week, and but it's taken me a lot longer because there are days you could just couldn't be out there. It was a, it was in the uh, low 30s most of the time, and you're working on metal. That's a little a little cold on the fingers, so it took a lot longer. But normally. If you you got any uh, experience at all in doing this, a young buck could probably put it together in three days. And uh, and that's a full three days. But, and that's how you do on the fenders. And here I go again with my uh, vice grip. Works really great. Just make sure the vice grip doesn't restrict the nut going on all the way. And I always put the vice grip on the nut end, and I always, I always wrench on the bolt head. And you can see how that, how the vice grip just stays right there. And you get it nice and tight. It took a little longer than that to tighten them up. I didn't think you want to sit and just watch me wrenching on a, on, uh, on a bolt head. Okay. So what we got here now is uh, that's the, uh, the spring bracket. You can see there's the spring and the spring bracket. There's a, uh, a front bolt that goes on there and it's got a bushing in it. That's to allow the front end of that spring to move a little bit. And the back part of it, you'll see when I put a bolt in there, there's a flange that comes up off the spring. And that bolt holds it in. So that thing just, as you're going down the road, just slides loosely there so you get the spring action. And that's what gives you the support for the spring. And you do the same on both sides. Pretty simple operation. And here comes my uh, my vice grip again. And that thing is, is really kind of a lifesaver. A uh, little adjustment needed there. But it works good. A lot of these I'm only showing one side. There's no sense showing both sides because they're all they're awful similar. Now this one here, you're not the spring will be loose when you get everything in there. You know, I'm gonna put some good torque on, on this on this thing here. I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna really tighten it up. But it'll keep the the spring will stay loose the way it's designed. Okay.
Can you imagine how difficult this is you're laying on the floor doing it? Actually, it'd be nice if you can get a little higher. Uh, but this worked good for me. You see here, when I get it all tightened, that the spring will still move a little bit. Which is really what you want. And we're going to install the axle now. And we're going to line it up on the top of the springs. And there's little uh, mounting uh, guide pins on the top of the springs that then it holds into the axle. Got to make sure these are lined up before you put the clamps on and then everything will be all lined up and you're good to go. They're a little bit looser. We finally got it put together in the right spot. Now we're ready. All right, these are the uh, brackets that will hold the axle onto the springs. And uh, they're all put on there with lock bolts. Just double checking to see which way it goes there. You just slide it down. And I shouldn't leave that part in because that was the wrong way to put them in. You just slide it over there, get it to the right holes there, spin the bracket around, take it all lined up. You just hold them in place, put the nuts on there. And you tighten them all up, and we'll do the same for the other side. When you tighten the uh, four nuts on these clamps, make sure you tighten you tighten one a little bit, and then go to the next one. Work your way around so they tighten evenly. That way, everything will stay uh, connected and in place, and you won't be any out of alignment problem. Okay, here I'm getting ready to uh, install a wheel, and uh, taking the covering off here. Okay, this is the, uh, the nut that holds the wheel on. You can see there's a flat washer on the inside. Right about now, I'm starting to get a bad feeling that something just didn't feel right there. Now inside this packaging, there's supposed to be a cotter pin. It turns out it was in the packing for the other side of the axle. Okay, here's where I'm going to take the cap off and check the bearing and make sure there's some grease in there. And use a very small, slender screwdriver to pop it off. Take a look at it. Should be a little grease in there. We're going to have to add more grease after we get it all assembled. There's grease certs in the back of the hub there, and you need a grease gun to fill it up. And yeah, I'm looking at something in the book now just to make sure I'm in my head and I had it all squared away. I still had this uh, funny feeling that something wasn't quite right. So anyhow, I put, in a, put the wheel on there. Uh, put the bearing in there. Now I'm going to stick the uh, hand washer on. Now I'm going to put the bolt on or the nut on, but it just didn't, it didn't seem like it's going right. I mean, it just it should go a lot further than that. And I was going to bang the wheel there, but I didn't. But you can see the wheel is a little a little loose right there. And it just that there's something wrong with the threads there. And you can see that the wheel, you know, it's it's wobbly there. 
And I'm going, oh boy, now i got to take it all apart here. What it turns out is, uh, and don't do what I just did here. I wanted to get a, a big wrench to see if I could force it in there. That's dumb. Whenever you have thread problems, don't do that. And it, it just wasn't going to go. Turns out the threads were bad on there. And uh, I had to go back to uh, Northern Tool where I bought the trailer kit. The trailer kit's an Ironton kit. And it's up until this point, it was really looking pretty good. It's a well, well built thing. And I guess I can understand that. Anyhow, I went back to Northern Tool. Uh, told them I had a bad axle, and uh, they replaced it without any question whatsoever. I had to go to a different store, but I mean, th that was fine. I didn't mind driving over there and getting it. And so anyway, I had to take it all apart again, so that set me back a little bit, because that's a lot of bolts to take off and get that axle back off. Anyhow, I'm all done with that now. Here's what the trailer looks like. Okay, the frame's all put together, the uh, tow bar's on there, the wheels are on there. Everything looks pretty sharp. Fenders. I do have a little bit of work left to do on it. I've got to put with the, uh, I've got to put, put the, uh, hitch on there yet for the ball hitch and you can see there I got the uh, I got the hitch laying there there's my tow bar also on there but that's what it looks like and they got the chains on the floor there and this is just final stuff and if you take a look at it it's a well-built trailer an awful lot of bolts so I mean you really must gonna have to like to crank bolts to get this thing done but it is well built uh, I'm I'm really pleased with it so far. We'll see how it works when I get it all finished and we're hauling stuff up. Anyhow, I got a little cord there I had to get out of the way. But it's a nice looking trailer. There's the rail bracket holder right there. I got a couple more to have to put on yet. And uh, you can design that in rails anywhere you want. So here's where I'm going to put the, uh, the trailer hitch on. Okay, you can see there I've got the thing on. I just, I just, uh, Finger tighten the uh, the bolts and the nuts on there, and the chain just goes through one of the bolts. And here, you know, it's easy to hold a wrench, so I'm just going to tighten them up. Just get them as tight as you possibly can, without smashing anything. I crank them up pretty good. Make sure it's all good and tight. All right, there. The assembly of that mechanical part is all done. We're going to take it out now. We're going to uh, connect it to the uh, ball on my CRV, and we're going to check the adjustment for when you uh, tighten the latch down on the trailer, on the trailer hitch there, that it's good and tight. Here's a little adjustment in there so you can adjust how much tension you want it. Also check out to make sure the chains are, are the correct length and they're not going to be dragging on the ground when you're driving it. What you see me right there, I'm just pulling up on the back, and that's how the thing will fold up if you uh, decide to do that, if you want to just for space saving. But if you do that, you can't really have any rails on the trailer. You can have a flat pin, but you can't really do that. So. so anyhow, I'm just putting a secure pin in so it doesn't fall off. And the next step that we're going to do is uh, we're going to be doing some wiring. So far, pretty happy with everything except for the setback with the uh, with the axle. But I guess things like that can happen.
What I'm doing here now is there's two bolts on each side. One goes on the side frame and one goes down through the the spring the spring bracket. These are the bolts that you have to put together when you're using the trailer. It keeps the two halves securely locked. And now in order to tilt it up for storage if you want, you're going to have to take those four bolts off, two on each side. They're a little hard to get at, but I mean it can be done, no big problem. Yeah, I'm just showing here on this one side, but you got two on each side. You got one there, and then you got one that goes down into the spring bracket here. And uh, a little difficult, but you can get it done. Okay, here we're going to uh, we're going to start the wiring. Uh, I tried putting on the amber light there. Uh, and they're self-threading screws that hold them into the frame. But after they painted the surfaces, the holes get a little plugged up and the self-tapping screws, I mean, if you really force them, you're going to strip the screw or break the screw head off, one of the two. So just take a little drill and clean out the holes. And uh, then I always run the screw through there prior to putting on the lights. It's a little simple like that. But this just cleaned them out and it works just fine after you get that done. Getting tired of bending over here. It's a lot of bending over for for an old guy like me. But that's okay. I got to take a lot of breaks on it. And you can see on the fender right there, there's a bundle. That's the wire harness that comes with it. And prior to this, I had a uh, I bought a wire harness for the CRV, which is kind of neat. You can buy the harness. And inside the CRV, there's a plug inside the uh, inside the molding on one of them. And you just take that molding off and you can just plug the harness right in there. So you don't have any solder or anything like that. really works well. So here you can see me putting on the uh, amber light on the front. And now that i got the holes drilled out, it goes in pretty good. And okay, here in the back now, that is the uh, light bracket and the license plate bracket. In Minnesota, I don't need a license plate. I get a lifetime license that since the sticker that goes on to the tow bar. So I didn't even put the license plate uh, holder on there. But this is the light bracket here. The license plate holder would go attached to that thing, so it goes down. But anyhow, on this one here, the, the, the back left light also has the white light indicator. That's where the license plate would go if you have to have one. So make sure you put it on that side. It's kind of hard to mix them up, but just a heads up on that. And they just got a little uh, nuts that you put on there. Pretty simple. You can hand tighten them and then... Uh, and just take a little wrench and just snug them up so they're tight. Now all the wires are color coding on these things. Uh, so you don't have to do any uh, measuring with a meter or anything. You just put yellow with yellow and brown with brown. Now one thing in the Ironton book that wasn't too clear is what to do with the white ground wire. Now I, I'm very familiar with electronics and electricity so I, it wasn't a problem. But the white on these things will be the ground. They have to be grounded to the frame. And here I'm putting the light on the other side. I put all the lights on first and then I decided to uh, run the wire into the trailer. Which makes sense. A lot of dead, little, uh, little dead time here, but... Uh, Make sure you do this wiring correctly, and the wires are, uh, they're, they're not completely stripped, but they're partly stripped. Now here you can see I'm going to route the wiring through the frame. There's holes in the frame, so you got to make sure you do this. And where the trailer bends, you want to leave an extra loop on there. But you want to run the wires all the way back.
And you want to leave the wires loose. You don't want to make them tight. What I did is, uh, after I hooked up all the wiring on there and I got the wire, wire nuts on and everything, I took electrician's tape and I taped, loosely taped them to the frame so they didn't fall down. They stayed within the inside channels of the frame. And you can see there I'm stripping the wires right now. And I just used my little knife. You can, they're, they're, uh, the insulation's already cut, so you just got to pull it off. And uh, what you do, then you take the yellow wire and you to it of the of the harness. Take the yellow wire of the light, brown to brown, vice versa. White goes to white goes to the chassis ground. You twist them together and you put on the wire nuts. And one other thing I do is after I get the wire nuts on there, I always take electrician's tape and wrap it around the nut and then go down maybe about an inch and on down to the wire itself. The harness and this uh, keeps the wire nut secure and also keeps any moisture out. Just a little extra thing I found out years ago that works and uh, pretty simple as long as you put the uh, yellow to yellow, brown to brown, white to white, whatever the, all the other colors are. There's that little blue uh, wire nut that I'm putting on there. So when you twist the wires together make sure you run them properly before you do that. And you take the light wire and the harness wire and you twist them together. Okay, and you want to twist them in a clockwise rotation. Because when you put the wire nut on, that goes on in a clockwise. And you just make sure you keep them together that way. But it's pretty simple. Works really good. A little time consuming, but... Like I said, make sure you put electrician tape over that wire nut when you get it all done. And all I did here was the white wires. I just hooked it right into the frame, the light bracket right there, so that, and that would made a good grounding connection. And at the front of the trailer, on the tongue itself, uh, on the uh, the harness wiring, there's a white wire that comes out that way. That also you screw into a location on the tongue, so you get a good ground. When the connectors that you hook the car and the trailer together, that has a ground that goes through the whole thing. Well, what's nice about these harness kits is you, there's no measuring. You, you just do color to color is all you want to do. And as you tighten up these nuts to hold the lights on, don't over crank them because it's just plastic. And all they need to be is snugged up real good. And it's, you know, really good. You notice how loose that wire was there. I just flipped that around. I'll show you later when I get it all done. And what I'm doing now is I'm just hooking on the uh, the ground wire to the back of the to the nut that holds the or the post that holds the light onto the to the uh, frame bracket there. And that will provide you an excellent ground. It was a beautiful day, if I remember on this. I think it was about 42 degrees with a nice sun. Nice and warm out. You can see I'm not really cranking it. I'm just tightening it up a little bit. Just want to snug it up. And you just want to route your wires. Okay, that's for masking tape. When you take the masking tape and you tape it to the frame and into the channels, everything will hold together real good. Okay, so we, then we did it on this side, and we do the same on the other side. When you screw them wire nuts on, if you're doing it right, they should actually get good and tight and you won't be able to spin them. And if you notice, I'm pulling on a little bit to make sure the wire nut doesn't slip off. Because if you don't get it on right, it can slip right off and you don't want that to happen when you're going down the road. Anyhow, so there's how one of the back lights is, is uh, all wired up. Okay, now we're going to do the amber light. These are a little different. You don't have to cut the wires or strip them or anything. 
they've got some press-on connectors that you uh, you just lay the wires in there if you open up this little blue connector and you lay the wires inside of it and then all you gotta do is you got all the wires inside there and you take a pliers and you squeeze it together and there's little metal tabs on the inside that cuts through the insulation, goes into the wire, and makes your electrical conduct. And it's really simple, pretty easy, and it's quite reliable. We're almost done here. Later on when I'm uh, putting the deck on, you'll be able to see a better how the how I loop the, uh, or strung the wires through the frame and that. And you'll even see some places where I put the tape on and that. So we're pretty close to being good to go here. A uh, little spot in my head, just one little more crimp on it. But these work really good. And whatever you do, do not ever cut any excess wire off your your harness. You may never, you never know. On uh, a couple of uh, years down the road, something might happen where you need that wire that long. So there's the wire up in the front. It goes on back, and you'll see it's pretty doggone loose. You can see a bundled up extra wire right there. And then I just taped it on there with a tie wrap and uh, some electrician's tape. And you can see the electrician's tape there where I channeled it. That big loop right there, that's the excess loop you need for when you, when you tilt the trailer together so you don't break the wires. There's enough slack there so it'll get the bend. But that's how it all looks. All wired to go. Now we're going to get ready and we're going to test to see if the lights work or not. And uh, if they, all the lights are working, then the next step is what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to uh, put the uh, put the deck on it. And it looks a little sloppy with the wiring, but don't worry about it. That's that's good. That's the way it should be. Okay, here we're going to check out the lights. Okay, and uh, that was my brake lights and running lights. Okay, there's uh, you saw the running now. There's a turn signal, another turn signal. Okay, we should have a four-way coming up. There's our four-way flasher. That's my brake lights right there. And there's the four-way flashers, and we got a winner. We're all done with the wire, and we're ready to put the deck on.